uh, this blessed uh, time? Um, that's a very good question, especially that um, the time that we are approaching in a few hours, inshallah, will begin the last 10 nights of uh, Ramadan. And <clears throat> it is highly recommended to increase making dua during precious times. And this is going to be the most precious time of the year as far as the night time as we spoke earlier. Then also at the time of breaking your fast, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, لِلصَّائِمِ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ دَعْوَةٌ لَا تُرَدُّ Every time, at the time, at the time of every day, at the time of breaking your fast, 10 minutes before breaking your fast, table should be served so that you wouldn't be distracted by serving the food and making certain that this is uh, ready and that is ready. Rather now, the time is to make dua. The time is to make dua. Your dua during this time will not be rejected. Rather, it will be accepted and it will be answered. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, for every fasting person at the time of breaking his or her fast, a dua which shall not be uh, rejected. Also, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, what if I figure out it is the night of Laylat al-Qadr? What dua shall I invoke Allah most and best? He said, O oh, Aisha, say, Allahumma inna ka'afoon, tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna, O oh, Allah, indeed you are the ever-pardoning and you love to pardon, so pardon us. So now, brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us some etiquette before, during, and after making dua in order to enhance the acceptance of one's dua. Because dua is the most important form of worship, is the ultimate form of worship. In the sound hadith, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah, it's a sound hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us before making dua, we have to praise Allah, we have to exalt Him, we have to thank Him, to give an introduction. Even if the person is asking anything from his manager, from his superior, he doesn't uh, open the door right away and he says, I need a vacation. He gives an introduction. Good morning, sir. How are you and how's your family? We all pray for you and we're very happy to have you as our manager. Please, I need a vacation because I need one, two, three, four. So that enhances the acceptance of your uh, request. The most worthy of all praise is definitely Allah, the Almighty. Our praises would not benefit Allah, would not increase His domain, but only reflects our servitude to Allah, the Almighty. So the Prophet ﷺ once entered the masjid and he saw um, while he was sitting in the masjid, a man entered and he made dua and he said, Allahumma li warhamni. Oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Ajilta ayyuha al-musalli. Ajilta ayyuha al-musalli. You rushed. So teach me, O Messenger of Allah, what am I supposed to do? So the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا صَلَّى أَحَدُكُمْ Which means whenever any of you makes dua, because as salah is a form of uh, worship, is a ibadah, is a dua. فَلْيَبْدَأْ بِتَحْمِيدِ اللَّهِ Let him begin by praising Allah, thanking Allah for his countless blessings. الحمد لله والثناء عليه الحمد لله وحده الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه then لنصلي على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم ليدعو بما شاء then after praising Allah the Almighty you send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and then make whichever dua whichever wish that you have in mind as long as it is legal and halal and it is not exceeding the limit. I'll tell you what is the meaning of exceeding the limit in a little bit. With regards to after praising Allah, exalting Allah, glorifying Allah, you send the peace and the blessings upon the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. Because in the hadith, the Prophet said, Kullu du'a'in mahjub, hatta tusalli ala nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's a sound hadith. Kullu du'a, every du'a you make will be barred, will be blocked. Its ijaba, its answer will be blocked. Why? Until you send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet So Allah the Almighty loves 
those who send the peace and the blessings upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So he said in Surah Al Ahzab, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayuhal ladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah and his angels do send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, who you believe, join them both, join Allah, join his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make this dua of this salutation and sending the peace and the blessings upon the messenger of Allah. And if you do, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man salla alayya salatan, Sallallahu Alaihi biha ashra. So Allah the Almighty will bless you ten times more as a result of sending the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ once. Then he definitely accepts every time somebody makes salah and taslim upon the Messenger of Allah. So that is why it is recommended to envelop your dua, your mas'ala, your need, your invocation and supplication. By in the beginning, you send the peace and the blessings upon the Messenger of Allah. And after you make your dua and before the conclusion, you send the peace and the blessings upon the Messenger of Allah. Allah, the most generous, Akramul Akrameen, He would not only pick the salutation in the beginning and in the end and neglect your dua in between. Then the next etiquette, brothers and sisters, is to face the Qibla. Facing the Qibla isn't mandatory, but here we're talking about what is recommended, the etiquette. Also, raising the hands while making dua. Because in the hadith, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Inna Allah hayyun kareem. Hayyun kareem. Allah is shy. And he is most generous. Yastahi idha rafa al-abdu yadayhi an yaruddahuma sifra. Allah the Almighty would never, out of generosity, turn your hands down empty. Sufran, the, the word sufr means zero. So he will not return you uh, with nothing. Rather, when you raise your hands and make dua, definitely Allah will give you, will give you something. Will give you maybe similar to what you've asked for. Or maybe will give you something better than what you've asked for. Or maybe because you have been invoking Allah. Remember when I said, do not exceed the limit. You've been invoking Allah, demanding a particular thing. And Allah the Almighty loves you and He knows that your ruining and your destruction will be in that particular thing which you're demanding. Oh Allah, please, please, I need to catch the flight. Oh Allah, please, please, I need to catch the flight. No, you're not going to catch the flight. Why not? Because this flight is going to crash. I don't want you to die now, you see? So He knows best. He wants you to survive. Many people would not appreciate not answering their exact dua unless if they see a physical outcome out of that. Like these two brothers, one of whom came to me and said, I was supposed to be on the flight which crashed, the Egyptian flight which crashed on the Manhattan shores in New York. He said, my brother simply lost the tickets. It was more than... 15, it was almost 20 years ago when the people used to use the hard copies of the tickets. You don't have the hard copy, you don't board the flame. Subhanallah, he said, so when we were barred and we were not able to board the plane, we went to the hotel room, we checked in, and we were undoing our luggage. We still have a couple more days before the next flight. So we saw the tickets in the outer compartment. Then, we were very upset, we were even more upset because now we had the tickets, but we were not able to board the plane. And it's a great loss. I lay down on my bed, I turned the TV on, and the first news, all over the news, the crashing of the Egyptian flight. So I jumped off my bed, I hugged my brother, I kissed him, and I kept asking him, forgive me, thank you so much for saving our lives. So you see, Allah the Almighty loves you. And he sometimes does not answer your request and your dua because your request have been all wrong. So he corrects it for you out of love. And this is also as a result of making dua. When you make dua, you must be certain of the answer. You don't say, I don't know whether he will answer or not. Some more etiquette after this call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.